Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Harborough series. Harborough is the southernmost district of the East Midlands County of Leicestershire. There are 91 parishes here, so let's put the spotlight on one. Welcome back to Leicestershire once again, people, and to the district of Harborough. Now, last week in North Kilworth, uh, we touched on quite a few things in that place. It's quite a big place. One thing I didn't touch on purposely is this. This is Kilworth Springs. It's a golf club. And the reason I didn't touch on this, even though it is partially within North Kilworth, is exactly that reason, because it's half within North Kilworth and half within today's parish, which is just to the south. And, uh, you don't need to be a genius to work out what it's called. Welcome to South Kilworth. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. In the last episode in Harborough, we looked at North Kilworth, which you'll remember was Chivalswood in the Doomsday Book. This week, we're in Cleverly Ord, or South Kilworth, if you will. Both settlements belong to Chiefel. This was Chiefel's yard. South Kilworth is smaller than its northern counterpart, but it still has a lot of features to speak about. The shape of the village was formed as it expanded at the crossing of two turnpike roads, one between Rugby and North Kilworth, and the other between Welford and Lutterworth. It's been that way since the 18th and 19th centuries. The historic core of the village is focused both around this road crossing and the parish church of St Nicholas. Both the roads and the village, however, are much older. There's some evidence of a Roman settlement here, thanks to local finds of many shards of Roman pottery. Thanks to those roads, many distinguished people have lived and travelled through the parish. One famous man was Dr William Pearson, who was the rector of St Nicholas's Church until his death in 1847. We'll discuss what made him so famous as we walk around. There's a rather large landmark which gives us a clue, although not far from it there's another which definitively tells us. This was a lovely walk around another pretty Leicestershire village. Join us to see what else we found in the Avon Valley. To begin South Kilworth, we're at Kilworth Springs Golf Club. This is mostly in North Kilworth, but made more sense to include here. This was founded in 1993 and it's a full 18 hole golf course. Kilworth Springs features a restaurant called The Attic, which offers modern European cuisine. It was until 2020 a standard restaurant. However, it now only operates on a pre-order private dining basis. The golf course overlooks the beautiful Avon Valley. I would imagine the name Kilworth Springs is a direct reference to the water sources in the valley. Moving on up North Road, we come to a small pumping station just before we enter South Kilworth Village. I don't know why, but some people do like to see these. This keeps them happy, I guess. Okay, bus times, uh, it's the 58 once again, uh, just like in, in North Kilworth and in Walcote as well. And you can catch it right here outside Lee's Crescent. As you enter the village, you pass this sign warning large vehicles of a weight restriction. I have no idea where the limit in question is, but traffic wise, it reduces the amount that passes through here. Mm. 
Now on Welford Road, Nicky spotted the old red phone box. Here it's now a cabinet for the defibrillator. No book exchanges thus far in Leicestershire. I wonder if they have any. Opposite is an old chapel which dates from 1880. It's now been turned into a house. I believe this was a Congregationalist chapel as opposed to a Wesleyan or a Primitive Methodist. Every time we come to the Midlands, we always seem to find plenty of houses that are thatched. I'm not sure why it seems to be, but up north where we live, okay. there aren't any. <laughs> There's no. the odd one or two, but yeah. generally speaking, in this part of the world, a lot. thatched cottages are all, yeah, they're almost normal. And I imagine to people around here, it is just a simply a case of, oh, well, it's just another house. But for us, it's uh, something different. And I love them. I love them. I love seeing thatched cottages. They're awesome. Rounding the corner, we can see a sign here for the White Hart pub. Initially, we thought it had been knocked down due to the patch of waste ground behind it. As we'll see, it's still very much alive. The route now follows Dog Lane. In front of us here is Smithy's Yard, where the village blacksmith would have been years back. According to Google, this is now a massage therapist. The only other thing of note here is a farm. In the 1800s, many parishioners out here were farmers, much like North Kilworth. The difference was North Kilworth had the Royal Implement Works. This is very much the part of the route here where there's not a lot. There's just open fields, a farm behind us, the occasional house, uh, but we do go back peace. into... Peace and quiet. Yeah, and there, there is peace and quiet, of course. Uh, we do go back into civilization pretty quickly, though, because at the end of Dog Lane, it turns right onto Rugby Road again, which, as you've seen already, is uh, quite a busy thoroughfare, so we're not going to be uh, out in the middle of nowhere for long. On the left is a field full of teepees. Beyond this is a huge lake called the Moats. This was the site of the manor house held by the Belgrave family in the 16th and 17th centuries. In 1633, it was known as Well Close. Along those lines, the south of the village used to be bigger. Much like Misterton and Pulteney, the Black Death reduced the size of the place. As we hit this tree, it's time to talk about William Pearson. As well as being a rector, he was a founding member of the Royal Astronomical Society. He built an observatory in 1834 to house one of his telescopes. Here is the observatory, which is now a house. I would imagine he spent some time in the pub too, seeing as it's right opposite where he lived. The White Hart has been here for well over 150 years, serving passing traffic on the turnpikes. On the other side of the road, we can see where his house was, right after Nicky does the honours with South Kilworth Parish Notice Board. That's three down now in Leicestershire. South Kilworth on the ball here with the platy-jubes things. There's a brand new bench to commemorate Her Majesty the Queen's Platinum Jubilee 2022. You can find this directly opposite the White Hart pub, which apparently, according to this sign, is open to pour you a drink and make you smile. Can't ask for more, can you? This is where William Pearson lived, the rectory, located right on the crossroads. On the wall outside is a green plaque which marks his life here. He's not the type of man we come across often. Across the street we have an old post office, which is sort of obvious seeing as you can see the post box. There's also a cute little bus shelter too, which almost looks like a tiny house. Whilst North Kilworth had wells for water, South Kilworth had a village pump. This was restored sometime between 2012 and 2018, with its box being repainted and a new plinth being installed. If you keep walking here, you'll pass the village school, which is very well regarded. Its original buildings were built in 1851 and 1858, and a new classroom was added in 1908. So this is the village green, and there's no parking on the village green thanks to uh, those signs just there, which is a good idea because, you know, a place like this needs to be kept looking nice all the time. Also on the green, you've got Joseph Morris, high class family butchers. I love finding little uh, businesses like this because uh, obviously these days, most people use supermarkets for all their grocery stuff and, you know, most supermarkets have got their own uh, butcher's counter. But it's good to see that there are still 
independent butchers out there and they do their job as well as they always have. So now we've entered the churchyard and straight away Nikki reverted to type and looked at the graves. We came across these. Who were Chris and Ruth we wondered? St Nicholas's Church was built in 1350, soon after the Norman invasion. It's still in regular use with a committed congregation. The church seats 300 people and its burial ground was expanded in 1898. The church itself has seen many changes, amongst them the addition of the clock in the tower with its four gilded faces, which was installed as a memorial to the local men who gave their lives in World War I. This is a church with a brilliant policy of inclusivity. This notice basically says all are welcome regardless of your identity, or indeed, which rugby team you follow. Parts of the church were reconstructed in 1869. The spire and the tower here have been repaired multiple times, but never replaced or rebuilt. They still stand, as they have, for more than 500 years. This churchyard is something of a rare find because there's still some space in it for future burials. And Nicky's just spotted this section here. What's this all about? Oh, are these... Uh... This looks like the rector's graves. Yeah, I would have thought the so. the family of the rector. They're all the same, look. Yeah. They've all got the same markings on. We've seen that before. Searby, Lincolnshire. Yeah. Like North Kilworth, South Kilworth also has a bowls club. Both clubs are always on the lookout for new members, so if you live local and fancy having a go, try out this lovely green. Next we have South Kilworth Village Hall, run by the Village Hall Committee. The hall was built in 2001 to replace the old Village Hall after many years of fundraising. Adjacent to the hall, there's a large play area and a playing field. The play area has an adult fitness course with equipment funded by an annual grant from Vattenfall, the owner of the local wind farm. Ah, and we're fully around South Kilworth. Woo! <laughs> nice place, Nicky, yes? Yes, it's warming up though. Let me just check to the temperature, the current temperature. It was lasting North Kilworth. Oh, oof. Is I'm it glad, that bad? I'm, oh yes, I'm glad we're nearly done. We've only got the one more on this run to do. We are looking at 29 degrees right now. There's no wonder why it feels like I can wring out my some body parts because I'm sweating that much. And, Sticky uh, family channel. I said body parts. Uh, you know, I didn't. I could. I could like literally, sort of, you know, wring out my arms and drip sweat. I'm that hot. Honestly, that. Oh, no, I'm wearing white. I'm hot. That says more about me than it does about you actually thinking about it, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say, but you know, no, it, it's cat fit. Yeah, wear it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, uh, now I debated with myself whether or not to give this one a picture bit or not because it's so small. Um, I decided not to on the grounds that the only thing really I haven't covered is a reservoir which is partly within uh, South Kilworth and partly within Northamptonshire because it's right on the border. and. There is a place where I can go and get a shot of the reservoir, so we'll, I'll see if we can do it. We'll drive out there. If we can't, we can't. Um, but if we can, it'd be a good way to finish. Yes, it appears we can see the reservoir. This isn't it. This is the River Avon with a nice little weir with some uh, local wildlife. But if I uh, turn the camera around to the other side of this bridge, you can see the reservoir through the trees there. Now, the other end of the reservoir is where the down wall is, but I can't get to that because it's down a private road. So this was really the only place I could stand to capture uh, Stanford Reservoir. But I don't think I've done too badly there, to be fair. It's a nice way to end. I can see plenty of swans on that water. They're enjoying the heat, even if we're not. <laughs> and there you go. That is the Parish of South Kilworth, and now I will sign off properly. This has been the Parish of South Kilworth, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. <laughs>